everyone, welcome back to my channel and to today's video. I hope you're all really well. So today's video I've entitled five super speedy sewing patterns to make when you just need a quick fix. So I think we all have those times, or I certainly do, when I just need to sew something. <laughs> and it might not necessarily need to be sort of a really involved make or something. Sometimes you just get the urge to sew. And there's also those times when I think you've had a break from sewing and you feel a little bit nervous to get back into sewing again. I know I've definitely had those times when you just feel as though you've lost your sewing mojo a little bit. I feel as though these five patterns that I'm going to share today would be really good ones as well, just to sort of get you back into the sewing game and get your sojo back a little bit. So I hope you'll enjoy what I'm going to be sharing with you today. So I won't share with you what I'm wearing just yet because what I'm wearing is actually one of the patterns that I'm going to share a bit further along in this video, so I'll be talking about that then. So the first pattern in my top five super speedy sewing patterns has to be the Sapphire Trousers by Tilly and the Buttons. So the Sapphire Trousers are from this amazing book by Tilly and the Buttons called Make It Simple. And to be honest, I could have chosen a few different patterns from this book because there are quite a few in here that are really lovely, super speedy makes. It is, of course, the point of this book. Um, they are meant to be simple makes that are quick and easy um, and just like nice ones to sew up when you feel like you need a quick sewing fix. So this is the perfect book for this video, I think. <laughs> um, anyway, I've chosen the Sapphire trousers because I've made quite a few versions of them now and I absolutely love them. So these are the Sapphire trousers if you've not seen them before. They're a really lovely relaxed pair of um, easy to wear wide leg trousers. Um, they're elasticated at the back and they have a lovely flat waistband at the front which I think is really nice and really flattering. And as you can see, or you might not be able to see actually, it might be a bit small, but um, within this Tilly and the Buttons book, in the Make It Simple book, they actually give you the estimated time that it should take you to cut out this pattern and how long it should take you to sew. So for the Sapphire trousers, it estimates that it will take you only 20 minutes to cut out this pattern. Obviously, it's assuming you've already traced the pattern off first. Um, but 20 minutes cutting time and only one hour and 15 minutes to sew. So they really are a really good quick fix that I make to make when you just want something super speedy to sew. So the size ranges in the Make It Simple book range from a size 1 to a size 10. A size 1 is a waist 24 inches and a size 10 is a waist 42 inches. Obviously I'm going on the waist measurements this time because these are a pair of trousers. The hip measurements are size 1 34 inches and size 10 51 inches. So what I would say with this pattern is just to check the finished garment measurements before you select your size. So I'm usually between a size two and three in turning the buttons patterns. And with this pattern, I'm actually an inch smaller in the waist and hips than the size I decided to make. I decided to go for a size two, even though the waist is only 26 inches and I'm a 27 inch waist. And the hips are 35 inches and I'm actually a 36 inch hips. And the reason I did that was because there is quite a lot of ease in the finished garment measurements of this pattern. And obviously you're working with an elasticated waist as well, which is quite easy to adjust or make bigger or smaller as needed. Um, so I decided that I didn't want my Sapphire trousers to be too oversized. I decided to go for a size two and then I could adjust the waist accordingly. So the reason this pattern is so simple and quick and easy to sew is that there are only two pattern pieces to it. There's a back leg and a front leg and then the waistband is actually made just by turning under the top of your trousers once they're all sewn together and you have a pair of trousers the waistband is just literally turned under and you make an elasticated casing out of the waistband that you've turned under um, and then you turn up the hems of your legs and then you're done. So if you're a beginner sewist this is a really good one to try as well because all of the instructions in Tilly and the Buttons patterns and with the books as well are really thorough they really hold your hand the whole way through as you can see there are lots of lovely pictures here to guide you through as well so they're really good patterns to follow if you are a beginner. So what I like about the Sapphire trousers as well is that they are really easy to adapt to change around to your own personal taste so if you've watched my videos before you'll know that I've made quite a few versions of this pattern in culotte length so I make mine to come to around mid calf on me because I just prefer that 
look um, and I really like how it feels and I think it's quite nice and summery as well just to have them a little bit shorter. Um, of course you can actually lengthen them down and have a full length pair of trousers as well and that looks really nice and I think particularly this summer wide leg trousers and plazo pants and things like that are really on trend and they're really in fashion and in lots of the shops and things like that as well. So I think I'd really like to have a go at actually making a full length pair of these this summer as well. You could quite easily cut these shorter actually and make a pair of shorts from them as well which is another thing that I'd really like to try. I've seen lots of lovely elasticated pairs of shorts around made from like a casual linen or a linen viscose or something like that and I think they look really nice too. So I'd really like to have a go at making both a pair of shorts from this pattern and also a longer length pair of trousers as well. As always, depending on what kind of fabric you use to make your trousers with, you'll get a different effect and a different look. For all of my Sapphire trousers, I've used a floaty viscose because I just like the drape of a viscose and I like the way that it's kind of floaty and it feels really nice and they hang really nicely. If you were to use something with a bit more structure like a cotton or a chambray or a linen or something, then your trousers would have more of that kind of A-line shape. They would look more wide-legged and I think that would look really nice as well. But it really is one of my favourites and I know it's just a super simple, quick and easy sew to make when I just need something to get on with and feel good about when it's done. So second on my list is actually the Cassiope dress by I Am Patterns. So this is one that I've sewn quite a few times now for my daughter in the mini version. But back in October I was working on a Mummy and Me challenge with Makerist where I sewed up the mini version for my daughter and the adult version for myself. And making the version for me made me realise what a super simple, speedy sew the Cassiope dress actually is. It's a super relaxed, oversized, baby doll style dress with raglan sleeves and there are absolutely no fastenings in it at all, you literally just put it over your head. So it's a really quick and easy one to sew. Raglan sleeves are really easy to put in as well because there are no setting in sleeves in the round or anything like that. You literally just sew the sleeve seam straight and then you can sew down the sides. Um, so yeah, this is a really quick, easy one to sew up and I really, really loved it. So in terms of the sizing for this pattern, with the PDF pattern, the sizes range from a size 34 to a size 52. So the size 34 is actually a bust 30 and the size 54 is actually a bust 51. But point to note is that if you are making this pattern, always check the finished garment measurements because it does come up quite oversized. So as I mentioned, I'm actually a bust 32, but when I made this pattern, I actually downsized to the first size of this pattern, which is only a bust 30 because there is a good six to seven inches worth of ease around the bust. So depending on how oversized you want your dress to feel, definitely check the finished garment measurements first. But do remember as well, of course, that you do need to get the dress over your head, so perhaps don't size down too much. <laughs> so what I really like about this pattern is that it's a really good one for all seasons. So if you made it from, um, say, a cotton gauze or a floaty rayon or a viscose or something, it would be really, really nice for summertime. Lovely, swishy and cool, um, you know, really floaty and everything. But it's a really good one as well to make for winter time. So you could make it in a wool fabric or maybe a corduroy or even a velvet or something like that. And it would be a really lovely one to wear in the winter time with tights and boots. Um, you can make it as dressy or as dressed down as you like. As well as that, there are loads of different hacking options with this pattern as well. I think it's a really good kind of basic pattern. It's a good bodice to have in your wardrobe, a good kind of basic dress block pattern. So over on the Iron Patterns um, website, there are lots of different hacks that you can do with this pattern. Actually, the mini version of this pattern does come with a button down back so that you can get it on and off easily. Um, but you can actually adapt the adult version as well to have the button down at the back. There's also a hack to show you how to make this pattern into a short sleeve dress. You can also add frills with it. With one of my daughter's mini versions, I actually added a frill down the raglan seams at the front of her dress, and that looked really pretty. I made that on one of her Christmas dresses, and that looked really nice. Um, and there are a couple more hacks that you can do on their website as well. Again, um, you could easily lengthen this one down to make it a midi or a maxi dress and it would be a really good one to hack into a top as well. You could make it into a nice little peplum style top just with a really short skirt and the rest of the bodice as it was. 
So yeah, I think the Cassiope dress is a really, really good one for beginners um, because as I say, there's no fastings in there. And um, if you want to make it super easy, then you could use a nice stable fabric like a cotton or a cotton lawn or something. Um, but if you are a more experienced sewist, then I think you could knock this dress up in a couple of hours and give yourself a nice quick and easy sewing fix. So that's why I'm including the Cassiope dress. Next on my list is actually a jersey pattern. And this is the Kirsten Kimono Tee by Maria Denmark Sewing Patterns. So this is actually a free sewing pattern that you can get if you register on the Maria Denmark um, website. If you add in your email address and add yourself to her mailing list, then you are automatically sent this pattern to download. Um, I love this pattern. I downloaded this pattern when I was quite new to sewing jersey because it looked like a super simple sew. And I really liked the style of this t-shirt. So it has a lovely sort of boat slash neck style neckline to it. And then there are some grown on cap sleeves here. So no fiddly sleeves to insert or anything like that. It's all grown on. There's literally just a front piece and a back piece. Um, and then you can finish your neckline either by binding it or the pattern tells you how to add a neckband if you prefer that look, or you can actually use shop bought knit binding as well, or shop bought elastic to use with jersey. So yeah, a really super simple style t-shirt, um, which you can make in lots of lovely different jersey fabrics and have millions in your wardrobe. I've actually only made one of these so far, but recently, as you'll know if you've watched my videos, I've been on the hunt for a perfect t-shirt pattern. So I actually went back through all of my t-shirt patterns that I already own, and I came across this one and thought, do you know what, I should make more of those, because it really is a lovely simple style top, and I think it's a really flattering style as well, and it's a really good one to have to wear with things like your sapphire trousers, or a nice floaty skirt, or a pair of jeans, or something like that. So in terms of the sizing for this one, this one ranges from a size XS to a 4XL. The bust for size XS is 31.5 and the bust for 4XL is 50. So the pattern actually suggests that it can be sewn by absolute beginners and it also suggests that if you are more experienced with knit fabrics, you'll knock this one out in an hour. And I think that's absolutely true. I think even though I sewed this earlier on in my sewing journey with knit fabrics, it was a really, really quick one to sew up. And I remember thinking how quick it was. Within your PDF download, you get a really comprehensive instruction booklet as well with lots of good pictures um, to take you through the process, which is really helpful. So a good one again, if you are just starting out in jersey sewing and you want to sort of bit of hand holding along the way, this is a really sort of comprehensive instruction booklet. So a really good pattern for beginners. It's also a good one for using up scraps because if you're making one of the smaller sizes, you can actually get this out of only three quarters of a meter of fabric. So a really good one for scrap busting. And even if you're making one of the larger sizes, you only need around one and a half meters of fabric. So it is a really good one for um, scrap busting. And it's also a good one to make with a really nice, maybe more expensive jersey as well, because you don't need to use too much fabric. So I thought I would include that one as well, the Maria Denmark Sewing Kirsten Kimono Tee. Number four on my list is the Sew Over It Shift Dress and Top Pattern. So this was actually the first indie sewing pattern that I ever bought and I credit this for getting me back into garment sewing making um, because yeah, I sewed this once and then I absolutely loved it and just wanted to make more and more garments. So the Sew Over It Shift Dress and Top pattern is a really good one. There's lots of variety to this pattern, although it is a really kind of super simple style top and dress um, that can just be made as simple or as um, complicated or dressy as you like. So as you can see from the pattern image, hopefully, um, <laughs> it's a dress and top pattern. There are a couple of bust darts. You can make it long sleeved, you can make it as a top, you can make it three quarter or short sleeved, or you can have this really pretty frill detail to the armhole as well. I've made every single version of this pattern, dress and top, and it's actually what I'm wearing today. <laughs> So I've definitely got my money's worth out of this pattern. I just think it's a really good one, especially if you are a beginner. I think this is a really good one to sew because even though it is a really simple shape and a really simple style, there are a couple of sort of standard like dressmaking techniques in there that are just really good to have under your belt, like making darts 
inserting the face in. The back is actually finished just with a keyhole opening that you finish with a little either a press stud or a hook and eye, or you can make your own button loop and add a button, which is what I've done. So lots of lovely, good, solid dressmaking techniques in this one. There are two different facing finishes in this pattern as well. If you're going to be making the sleeveless versions of the dress or top, then the inside is actually finished with a full neck and armhole facing, which is really nice and really neat. If you're going to be making the sleeved versions, then the neckline is just finished with a facing because obviously you have your sleeves sewn on and you finish them in the inside. So my version that I have on here today is actually the top version and you can see that I've added the little frill onto the sleeveless version of the top which is just a really easy but really sort of effective detail to have on the top and I just think it makes it look really pretty. So I'll stand up and show you how I'm wearing it. So I just have it tucked into a pair of jeans at the moment. It comes down to around uh, mid hip length, I think, on the top. It's a really nice um, style to have and you can make it out of so many different fabrics. I've made this from cottons, I've made it from a viscose. The one I have on today is actually made from a kind of bubbly crepe type fabric, um, which is really nice and really drapey. So over at Patterns range from a size 6 to a size 20. They've actually been updated slightly since I bought this pattern. You'll see I've got quite an old um, pattern cover here. They've been updated since I bought this one, although I do love these ones. Um, so a size 6 to a size 20, a size 6 is a bust 31, and a size 20 is a bust 45 inches. As I mentioned, I think I've made every single version of this um, pattern. The first one I made, I actually made the long sleeve shift dress and I made it from a viscose and I wore it for a christening and I was so proud of it. Um, I've actually had to discard that one now because the fabric that I made it with wasn't particularly good and I didn't have an overlocker then and it did all fray inside. But I was really proud of that dress when I made it. Um, I also made a really lovely shift dress the sleeveless version with a cap sleeve frill again, which I wore to death when I first made it. I wore it a lot. Um, but I've recently put that one to the back of the wardrobe for now because I don't feel quite as comfortable as I used to with how short it is. <laughs> so it's funny how your taste change over time, isn't it? And I've also made this long sleeve um, version as a top as well. Actually, I think I made it three quarter length. But I've still got that one in my wardrobe and it's still going strong. I still wear it, even though it's not overlocked on the inside because I absolutely love it. So yeah, I just think that this pattern is a really, really good one just for a quick fix. If you want something quick and easy to sew, then you can quite easily knock up a super simple shift top in probably an hour or two if you're an experienced sewer. But like I say, it's a really great one for beginners as well. So last on my list is actually another Tilly and the Buttons pattern and it's the Dominique skirt. So the Dominique skirt can actually be made in two different versions. You've got this version here, which is a more swishy, floaty kind of skirt. Um, it's actually cut on the bias, so you get more of a swishy style and a swishy feel to it. Or you can make this one, which I actually think is the best quick fix. Um, and that is an above knee skirt. It's made in four different panels. It's a straight skirt with an elasticated waist. Um, with optional patch pockets um, and this one is a really really quick and speedy sew and the pattern actually suggests that you can make this one up in an hour if you are an experienced sewist but it also suggests that it's a great one for beginners as well. As with most Tilly patterns this one's available in a size 6 to a size 34. A size 6 is a waist 24 and a size 34 is a waist 53. So I've actually only made the flared version of this skirt and this one was slightly more difficult because even though it's only made of four different panels and you sew them together, you actually cut it on the bias so it's slightly more difficult in that you're handling fabric on the bias which makes it slightly more tricky and it can be prone to stretch out a bit more so I actually hung my skirt for a day before I hemmed it to let all of that stretch it out get out of the way <laughs> before I trimmed it and leveled it and hemmed it. If you're making this straight one you don't have any of that problem because this one's actually sewn from a much more stable fabric and it's cut on the straight grain as well so you don't have any of that stretching out or anything to deal with. If you're going to be making this version you literally just sew up the middle of both back and front, you sew the side seams and then the waist is turned over to make an elasticated waist channel which you can bring in and it's super comfy to wear as well and then you have the option of adding the patch pockets if you want to. So a really good one if you're practicing your sewing skills as a beginner as well. So again with regards to fabric you're going to get a different look with your skirt depending on what fabric you choose to make your skirt with. 
So for the flared skirt, it would definitely be better to use a more floaty fabric like a viscose or a rayon or something, because you'll get that lovely floaty flared feel to the skirt, which is what you need. With this one, it's definitely better to use a more stable fabric like a denim or a chambray or a cotton or something, because it has that more structured look and feel. If you made it with a viscose, then it would definitely be more floaty, but it'd probably look quite nice as well. So I really think that the Tilly and the Buttons Dominique skirt is a great one to make if you just want a really quick sewing fix. So those are my top five patterns for super speedy projects when you just want a quick sewing fix. Let me know in the comments below if you've made any of those patterns and let me know if they are your go-to patterns to sew when you want something quick as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments below any quick and easy sewing patterns that you go to time and again when you want a quick sewing fix. Otherwise, I'll leave the video here and say thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I post videos weekly, maybe on a Sunday morning, with lots of sewing, inspiration, and sometimes knitting as well. Have a lovely day, everyone, and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye.